Welcome, welcome to our Monday Mindset. Welcome, welcome to Monday Mindset, our live video. I'm putting these on um, just about every Monday. There's the odd one that I am not available, but um, I think it's a really great way to start the week is to check in with our mindset. And um, because we know that how we think is what we end up manifesting into the world. So that's why I chose Monday. It's a great way to start the week. Um, and we've got a really good topic today. Uh, it's something I'm noticing a lot of my clients are struggling with. Um, most of my clients I ask, what, what stops you? Like what, how do you get in your own way when it comes to your health? Like what do you think would sabotage your meeting your goals and a lot of them really struggle with how to choose themselves first um, i think in our society we are kind of praised if we do things for others but we're not necessarily praised if we are just doing something for ourselves. so it almost is like a social issue for us as well we kind of feel bad maybe feel selfish i know for myself um, it took me a lot to wrap my mind around choosing myself first. Um, but it is absolutely key. There's no way that you can actually live a life that's free from ailments without taking care of yourself, without choosing you first every single time. Um, so we're here today to talk a little bit about what, uh, what could be stopping you. So feel free to add in the comments. Hi, everyone that's joined. I see on Instagram we have a couple people. Feel free to wave. Feel free to share where you're coming from in the world. And we'll spend about a half an hour today just kind of um, brainstorming as long as, uh, as you guys are sharing with me as well. And we'll get to the root, the root reason, the root problem or the root cause of why we would self-sabotage or why we wouldn't choose to put ourselves first. So if you're brainstorming now and you think of anything, again, throw it in the comments. I'd love to chat about it with you today. Um, yeah, so if you are that type of person, which it usually are the type of people that are attracted to me because I am um, somebody who offers, um, you know, programming and um, teachings and sharings on how to heal. And so most people who are struggling to heal in life in any way, whether it's from, you know, a mental um, block, maybe anxiety, depression, um, um, it could be physical, it could be turning into the physical block. Um, and then these things start to manifest in the body, in the physical body um, as a, an ailment or a dis-ease, a, a lack of ease in the body. And so yoga and yoga therapy are an amazing way. It's really the only way that worked for me to address what's going on on all layers of my being, to um, get to the root of why. And it's not easy. It's not comfortable always. Um, there's times where you have to sit in your discomfort and be with it and, you know, go through it and persevere. Um, and every time that you're brave enough to do that, you come out on the other side a little bit stronger and a little bit more healed and a little bit more educated or open and ready from your experience um, to know that that might be the right path for you. So, so if you do feel like you're struggling and you just can't seem to figure out why you're in pain or maybe you've got lack of energy, um, maybe you're struggling with kind of functioning in life because um, your anxiety is getting in the way or depression. Um, I think that is a, it's kind of um, key, right? It's, it's the messages that are coming from the body. They're saying something to you that needs to be looked at. So when I was a flight attendant for 13 years at WestJet and I was doing the demonstration about where the windows are and the exits and all the emergency stuff. What's one thing that we say on the airplane? 
You want to make sure that you put your own mask on before helping anybody else. And that rings so true, not just in an emergency situation, but in life. If you don't have your own mask on first to get your oxygen to take care of yourself, what good are you to anybody else, right? So I want to call um, everyone out there to um, really look at why. Why aren't you putting yourself first? What is stopping you? So for me, I'll share just kind of my own personal um, experience with it was that it felt good to do things for others, if I'm being honest. And in that feeling like I'm giving something up of myself, I was getting some sort of self-gratification or sense of feeling worthy that I'm actually doing something for somebody else. So now I can see that I'm worthy in their eyes and they can reflect that back to me because I didn't obviously feel worthy myself. So by running around and doing all the things for everyone else, that was giving me my sense of worthiness. And the reality is we are all worthy. If you were born into this world, you're worthy. So that's where it starts. We have to, we have to recognize that, that we are worthy of taking care of. And when we take care of ourselves and let go of other people's ideas of what we should or shouldn't do, things just fall into place. It's quite amazing. They just start to, um, it's like you're all, almost setting yourself free because you are giving yourself that energy and that love that you need. It sets you free so you can feel better. And then it also sets the other people free who you were trying to get worthiness from because you're almost asking something of them to give you that you're not taking for yourself. You're not giving to yourself. So I don't know if that rings um, true for anybody. If it does, please share in the comments if you feel like you that could be maybe the root of the issue is that kind of sense of wanting to do for others because it feels good to see them happy with who you are and how much you give. And that gives you a sense of worthiness. What else? What else could get in our way? Does anybody else have any ideas? I know there's a couple people live. Hello, great to see you too. Um, welcome. If, if you have any ideas of what stops you from taking care of yourself, um, that's the conversation today. I think it's really important that we talk about this because we don't talk about it a lot in the world. Um, and I think, again, it's kind of a societal thing to do for others and to work really hard and to be, you know, super successful and put all your energy out rather than in. If somebody was, you know, just taking care of themselves and only putting their energy into themselves and nothing else, nothing outside of themselves, what kind of reaction would happen in your society, in your, you know, maybe your social network of people? How would they respond to that? Again, I know for me, when I had to take care of myself because I had been not doing so and I had to, based on how life then, it's a, um, in yoga, it's called karma. So whatever your action, there's a direct reaction energetically. And so life put me into a position where I, I had no other choice. It was either choose to not live anymore that seemed like I was, I was at my rock bottom or I choose me. And that's how hard it was for me to open my eyes and see the importance of choosing me. I had to get to that point where I was really not sure if I was going to make it in this world. Right? So, so before that happens, you have the opportunity and I know it's easier said than done and all of those things, but that's why we have the Facebook group. If you have not joined it, you can check it out um, in the comments. I'll have it shared with you if you are part of Facebook. It's called Yoga Therapy uh, for Healthy Aging People with Chronic Pain. And in that group, there's a community. There's a community of like-minded people who are also struggling with chronic pain or disease or 
um, you know, roadblocks in their life that they're not able to live the life they want. So what's another reason that we might stop ourselves from taking care of ourselves? Does anybody feel like the word, what does the word selfish mean to you? Like it's a, it's kind of a negative word. It's kind of a word that people tend to use as, you know, if somebody says to you, you're selfish, it's kind of like they're trying to hurt you with it, or it's kind of a weapon to be selfish is a, is a bad thing. But I think it's quite the opposite. To be selfish is to care for, for you. There's different ways of, if, if you're truly caring for yourself with, you know, love and honor and on, uh, truth and respect and all of that, how is that selfish? I think if somebody else is projecting their idea of you being selfish on you, they've got work to do. And I think that's the number one step is letting go of what other people's idea of what you should do as well because they don't know who you are. They don't know what you actually need. And if we run around trying to please everyone else because of their stuff, we're going to end up empty. We're going to end up at that rock bottom because we have not filled our own cup. I guess you could say it's kind of a cliche, fill your own cup first, but it's not, there's no um, shame in taking care of yourself and choosing you first. Like we're all here in this journey on this planet and we all have a right to fully fill ourselves with love. And, um, and if people have a problem with that, maybe they're not the people that are, are, are going to be supportive to you, are going to be people in your life that um, are not toxic, right? And so sometimes there's a letting go that has to happen of that idea that they, they need to approve. So that would be something else that I really noticed with myself was that I had to really truly let go of all my loved ones, all my friends at the time, all my um, ideas about who I thought I should be or what I thought I should be doing. Um, and I basically had to start from scratch. And I knew deep down I had this kind of trust in myself and intuition that said, if they truly love me, they will be there for me. And if they can't be there for me, it also doesn't mean they don't truly love me. That might be that they're just in a different place of toxicity or negative thinking, and they don't know how to get out. They don't know how to heal themselves. They don't know how to break through that as well. So it became, it comes to a point where there's kind of a mismatch and you still just have to choose you every single time. So I won't, um, rant too long about that one but i think that that pretty much covers the idea of kind of letting go this um this idea of that other people um, or society or a social network um, know better f what's good for us than what we know for ourselves so anything else that you guys feel out there that might be something that gets in our way that causes us not to choose ourselves first what else could there be? Okay, if nothing's coming up, um, I was just brainstorming a few things that, that I, again, either my clients have shared with me or I went through myself. And another one is that we don't know what to do. We don't know how to take care of ourselves. It's not something we're really taught on a, emotional and spiritual and holistic level of how to take care of ourselves necessarily, depending on what family you came from. Um, but it's definitely not really taught in our schools. It's not really taught um, in our society or uh, promoted in our society. So what do you do once you decide you want to take care of yourself, then what? What's the next step? It's like, okay, well, go to your doctor. And he only knows you know, he's been trained in what kind of meds or surgeries or whatever he could offer for your ailments, but otherwise he doesn't really have that knowledge either of what to offer you. Most of them, I shouldn't say all of them, but um, 
so then what? So then where do you go to figure out what to do? Probably online, start Googling like a mad person, just finding out that's what I went through is just trying to figure out how, what is the root of this? Like, how do I start now? I'm in chronic pain. I'm depressed. I have severe anxiety and I don't know what to do. I go to my doctor. They give me meds. I go to my therapist. They don't relate or I can't quite connect or they might give me one or two tools, but it just isn't quite enough. Again, not knocking doctors or therapists. They're a great support in the process, but it wasn't the answer for me. And so then I would go to my physiotherapist, what the system paid for with through my benefits at the time, and I would end up in more pain. I would end up hurt, like literally in more damage because of them hitting a nerve wrong, or I don't know if it was their first time practicing that new technique or whatever it might have been. But for whatever reason, I kept finding that it was uh, causing me more pain. So I found myself on the floor in my living room on my yoga mat, totally helpless, totally hopeless, not knowing what to do. And I started with some online yoga therapy or yoga with Adrian. And I would just do a little bit. I would just do what felt good. And then I would see how I felt the next day. And so then I did that again and again and yoga, ther yoga for this or that and meditation because I, I had this innate feeling that meditation was really important for me to kind of re reconnect to um, something beyond my physical body, something beyond my, my mental chatter and to kind of reconnect spiritually to myself and meditation allowed me to do that. Um, and I started to feel better. I started to have more energy. I started to see results immediately. And I, I knew at that time, I knew that that was the direction I needed to go. So then it was just a journey from that point forward of listening to my body, listening to when I'm pushing too much, allowing myself to rest, not beating myself up. Another one of those things that you're not loving yourself if you're sitting there saying, I should be able to do this. I should push myself farther because why? According to who? According to society, according to a belief that you might have from childhood or something somebody else gave you because you don't want to feel like you can't. Why? Right? There's, there's something that we have to let go of and just meet ourselves where we're at in that moment and find what feels good and then continue to do that. Continue to love yourself, continue to train the mind. And that is the process. That is yoga therapy. And especially for chronic pain, there's a different way of approaching chronic pain in the body than there is with um, just a regular yoga class. So I don't encourage you to just all run out to a regular yoga class and throw your body into different shapes after hearing this video or, or connecting here. But I do encourage you to sit and breathe, to connect inward, to feel that really deep breath with yourself, to pause throughout your day. Take two minutes of just pausing, closing your eyes and doing some deep breathing. I have lots of videos on YouTube that you can check out to find different uh, breathing techniques. Um, and if you're really ready, if you really are ready to like take the plunge and cause that's where I was at, I just wanted somebody to show me how to get there. So I took the plunge, I took my yoga therapy training and I learned and I figured it out and I now understand the beauty of it and I want to share it with others. So that's why I created the online program, yoga therapy to heal freedom formula. And it's um, designed mostly for people with chronic pain, but it would help with any chronic condition. I mean, it could help with, um, with bringing that sense of ease back into the body and mind. So if you are feeling like you just want to jump into it, you want to learn how to retrain the mind, to retrain the thought process, to let go of these things that are holding you back, 
and you want a step-by-step plan and guide on how to do that, um, then the program is for you. And so if that's the case, then you can sign up for a breakthrough pain call. There's a link in the comments and we can discuss your situation together for about 45 minutes and figure out if the program is right for you. Um, and if you're still a little bit unsure, then I also have a free uh, workshop coming up on Wednesday this week at noon. So you can join that free workshop and it's about a 90 minute workshop. And I'll go through more of this information and um, you know how what we use to help retrain the body to come out of stress and to be in this place of healing and repair. And that's what's key, especially for chronic pain. Okay, so does anyone else have anything that they feel has not been discussed yet today that you would like to um, kind of work through or, or throw out there as something that gets in your way of supporting you to love yourself or to, to take care of yourself first? If you're not watching live, feel free to throw it in the comments and I will still uh, connect with you, um, even if you throw it in the comments later. So it looks like nothing else for, for live anyways. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps. I hope that brings a little bit of clarity to um, maybe understanding why we get in our own way. Um, I think the first step is awareness. So it's really looking at yourself and saying, okay, I do get in my own way or I, I am stopping myself from taking care of myself first. Why am I doing this? Can you figure it out? If you can't, that's okay too. You can reach out with, to me and we can figure it out together. And that's the whole point of the program is to work through this stuff with a community of like-minded people, with um, support from myself and coaching, um, the step-by-step -step guide of, of what to do, in what order. Um, yeah, so I don't, uh, uh, I don't think there's anything that is not considered in that program. For somebody who's struggling to overcome chronic pain, um, I feel like we've covered it all. And if we haven't, please share. I just want to hear from you and we will continue to work through this together. Okay, so again, reach out at any time with any of those roadblocks for you. And thank you so much for joining live. Um, I, I really appreciate seeing you guys live. It's awesome to see you here. And have a wonderful Monday. Keep that mindset. Maybe throw that into the brain as you're doing stuff throughout the week. And notice when you might get in your own way of taking care of yourself. Okay, I'm going to sign off. Have a wonderful day. And we'll chat soon.